watch the video version of podcast on our YouTube channel. The link is in the description and the section about the podcast. Hello everyone. My name is Strange, and I believe that people should know the truth. Today, I will introduce you to a letter that I received from our subscriber. After a long study of the author of the letter and the authenticity of the story, I decided to go public. For ease of perception, the story has been given an artistic coloring. Hello Strange, I am a recent subscriber to your channel, and I want to share a story that one of my doctor friends told me during a meeting over a glass of tea. I don't know if you and your subscribers will believe it or not, but he is an adult, respectable man, holds the position of chief physician in a large Baltic clinic. I would never have expected to hear such a story from him. But as they say, for what I bought, for what I sell. Next, the story will be on his behalf. So, it was many years ago when I was still working as an ambulance paramedic. The job, you know what it was like. Here you have drunks with a squirrel and attacks of appendicitis and birth colic and whatnot. And of course, how to do without such a category as the elderly. For some of them, we have already become like family because they called us very often. There were old men, God's dandelions, and there were those who exhausted the entire nervous system for some non-existent sores. At the same time, their health was better than that of our entire brigade. I've seen a lot of things in general, but there is one case that I have never told anyone about. There was, you know, such a suspicion that after that they could replace my doctor's coat with a straitjacket. Or even worse, they will be locked up somewhere in a research laboratory for the rest of their lives. And I don't even need such happiness for nothing. But I'll tell you. Why did I mention pensioners? There was an old grandfather among our regular clientele. Gray-haired as a harrier, he lived alone in a private house on the outskirts of the city. I was not a malinger. Few people have Olympic health at the age of 89. Problems with the heart, nervous system, and even, as it turned out later, the old man had mental problems. It's not that he's schizophrenic or, God forbid, violent, but Grandpa was a bit weird. He didn't communicate much with any of the neighbors, lived as a recluse, and even when he had seizures, refused to be hospitalized. He was so kind, hospitable, but as soon as it came to putting him for examination, he became like a flint. He will frown, and not in any way. I'm waiting for my grandson, he says, and everything. And what kind of grandson, from where? Not a word. For a very long time, we were so busy with him. Well, the vet has got used to our visits. That was his name. One evening, when our shift was almost over, and there were no more new calls, he offered to have tea. Well, I think an old man is bored, why not? I warned the driver of the car that I would be a little late, he was sympathetic. Well, we drink tea and have a conversation with Davidas for life. And he told me about his grandson, whom he is waiting for. It was after this story that his mental problems became clear to me. The story is this, more than 30 years ago, they went with their grandson to the forest. Mushrooms and berries, that's it. At that time, it was not yet a suburb, but a regional village, and the neighboring forest was a full-fledged forest in which you could get lost. It was in this forest that grandfather's grandson disappeared. He says they walked through the woods and at first everything was fine. Grandpa knew all the paths, the forest was like his own, and suddenly, bang, he got lost. The places are all unfamiliar, as if a goblin is driving. They walked, wandered, and it was already getting dark. Devadas, as an experienced man, had already begun to think about how he and his grandson would settle down for the night, but suddenly, they heard some strange hum. Moreover, as he said, the hum was not external, but as if inside the head. At first I thought it was from pressure, but my grandson also said I could hear it, and they'd followed that sound. We walked and eventually got out into a large clearing, and there? And there, grandfather says, he was stunned with surprise. I see, he says, there is some big thing in the center of the clearing, the size of an airplane. But without wings, it is disc-shaped and glows with a neon blue light. It cost of it is, he does not understand what it is at all. And the grandson, a six-year-old boy, became very interested and ran closer to her to examine her. At this age, everything is interesting, but the sense of self-preservation in six-year-olds is not particularly developed. Grandpa is screaming. Where are you going, Robert, to stop? He wanted to rush after his grandson, he says, but suddenly realized that he couldn't move. How paralyzed everything was. And the grandson ran very close to that object, 
and suddenly a blue light flashed, so brightly that Davidas lost his eyesight for a while, and then completely turned off. And when he came to himself, it turned out that he was standing on the highway about 50 kilometers from that forest. He stands alone, there is no grandson. Davidas preferred not to talk about what happened next. He only said that the authorities and search engines searched the entire forest three times, but they did not find either that clearing or Robertas. Then he added that his grandson was supposed to go to first grade at fall, and that after this incident, his daughter, Robertas' mother, simply cut her father out of her life. Ten years later, however, she did get in touch, but she did not come to the village anymore. As I understand it, it was painful for her to see the places where her six-year-old son's life was so tragically cut short. After that incident, the neighbors began to shun Dovidas, and he also began to live as a recluse, almost without leaving his native home. He says the pain in his soul was such that in the end, he decided to voluntarily leave this world and had already begun to prepare rope and soap. But before this fateful step, he had a strange dream. He saw his Robertus, who was inside either an aircraft or a spaceship, and he told him that he was fine. And at the end he added, don't worry grandpa, I'll be back, wait for me. So Devadas has been waiting for 30 years, decrepit along with this house. I was waiting for my grandson. When I heard this story, I felt ambivalent. On one hand, it was a pity to tears for this good man, whom life had treated so cruelly. But the fact that he is clearly mentally ill, I was extremely alarmed. I do not know what the real details of that story were, but the fact that the loss of Robertus and a long walk in the forest without water and food led Davidus to insanity. This fact was obvious to me as a doctor. Of course, I did not ask why he was not assigned to a mental hospital at the time. Maybe the examination did not reveal pathologies and behavior dangerous to society, or maybe it was just medical negligence. I do not know. But just in case, for future visits, I decided to take a sedative with me. And in general, you need to be more careful. Yes, he's not physically stronger than me, but you never know. Harm can be done in different ways. To stab unexpectedly with a knife or to mix the same rat poison in tea, for example. It's good that this time I saw the process of making tea with my own eyes and poured it out to us from one kettle. And what will happen next time? No, God is necessary to keep an eye out here. The opportunity to keep an eye out presented itself to me after a few days. Moreover, I was not at work at all that day. Just imagine, it's evening, you have certain plans. But suddenly the dispatcher calls and says that David has really asked me to come. What the hell? I say, another team is working today, so let them go. And I have a day off. No, they answer. David has asked you to come, he doesn't need others. I mentally wished my grandfather a long life, but there is nothing to do. I had to send all my plans to hell and go there alone on my own. It is clear that I got to my grandfather's house after dark and was not in the best mood. And as soon as he crossed the threshold of the house, he became alert. Something was wrong here. Davidas immediately caught my eye with some kind of perfect order and kept the house clean, for which he had special respect at his age. It was so easy to put on a marathon. And anyway, you know, men and order in the house very often do not intersect in life at all. But now everything was somehow cleanly cleaned and even the smell. In his house, there was always the smell of some tinctures, medicines, and the subtle aroma of some old Soviet perfume. And now the house smelled like ozone. That's how it happens after a summer thunderstorm. And it was very strange. The owner of the house surprised no less. He was cheerful, cheerful, and with a kind of joyful gleam in his eyes. Seeing this, I tensed up even more. And he says to me, I'm very sorry for interrupting you from your work, but I want to say goodbye. You treated me with all your heart. I want to thank you and share my joy with you. And where are you going, Davidas? Are you moving in with your daughter? I say, no, no, Grandpa laughs and his eyes are so joyful. My grandson has finally returned. Robertus is mine. He's taking me with him. In the first few minutes, I couldn't even find something to say. That's the number, I think. The grandson was drawn from the other world. They sailed. It seems that the grandfather's flask has finally whistled. It is necessary to determine the fool. And I smile back and say, that's the deal. Well, congratulations to you. And where does he, your Robertus? So he's here. Robertus, say hello to your uncle. Davidus says and looks somewhere behind me. I think, well for sure, it seems that only one grandfather sees this Robertus. And suddenly I heard a child's voice behind me. Hello, I jumped up in surprise. 
I turned around abruptly and saw a little kid about six years old standing next to me. I'm sick of it. I could have sworn he wasn't in the room when I came in. He must have crept in from the next room, but how quiet. I didn't hear a single step. I look at this Robertus. I say to him hello and I think. The kid disappeared more than 30 years ago. Now, it's an adult man should be under 40, and this one. Everything is different there, Grandpa suddenly said, as if guessing my thoughts. We hardly age there, and I will be able to return my wasted years, Robert has promised. I'm with him now, and then we'll take his mother, my daughter. I've suffered too much over the years, poor thing. I listen to him, and I look at my grandson who had returned. He looks like an ordinary preschooler, of which there are many. Except that the eyes are sky blue so much, so that practically no whites are visible. And also the skin with some kind of matte shade. Although it probably seemed like it. And there was also a look, something very childish. A strange look. At the same time appreciative, indifferent, and as if burning through. Robert has looked at me in silence, but averted his gaze. As we stared at each other, he didn't blink once. And then I understood everything. It seems that Dovita's age and mental instability led to the fact that he picked up some street kid, dubbed him Granson, and judging by the unblinking gaze of Robertos, pumped him with some pills or drugged him with something. And what's next? And only the inflamed brain of a pensioner knows this. But the fact that nothing good will happen is a fact. In general, we need to get this kid out of here somehow, call the neighbors, net his grandfather, and call the paramedics. Otherwise, there will be trouble. Nunavitas, congratulations. Do you mind if Robert toasts and I go into the kitchen? I need to ask him a couple of questions, I say, and I think, let's go now, grab this kid in my arms and run outside. And then it's a matter of technique. Step back, of course, the grandfather answers. And whether it was from the wrong room lighting, it seemed to me that his eyes also seemed to have become a bluer shade. Just for a while, it's time for us to go. But you know, I didn't just call you to show off my grandson. You always treat me with all respect. Without your treatment, I would not have waited for Robertos. And yes, I understand that you don't believe me. You think I'm crazy? Come on, Dividus, how can you, I say? Don't interrupt your elders. I didn't believe it, but that's okay. I wouldn't believe it either if I were you. But you're still a good person, and we decided to give you a gift. And as for the rest, the time will come, you will understand everything. With these words, Grandpa pulled out a small card the size of a credit card from the breast pocket of his shirt and handed it to me. I accepted it without a murmur, because I knew that it was better not to argue with crazy people. He turned it in his hands and examined it. There were no inscriptions on it, just a rectangle of blue-black color on both sides, made of, but I still didn't understand what it was made of. It feels like metal, but bends like plastic. Thank you, Devadas. I put the card in my pocket, and what is it? This is a pass. Excuse me, but where's the pass? To us, Robertus answered for his grandfather. One day we will return. Davidus added, do not lose and do not give it to anyone. Now go and talk to Robertos about what you want. Thank you for everything. And he held out his hand to say goodbye. The 89-year-old pensioner's handshake turned out to be surprisingly strong. There are no hints of senility or senile weakness. And the skin was also a matte shade. What's going on here? When Robertos and I went out into the hallway near the kitchen, I was already thinking about how to grab this guy comfortably in my arms, so that I could run outside with him and call for help, when suddenly he looked me straight in the eyes and said, You don't have to do anything. Thanks for Grandpa. Goodbye, and then he touched my hand, and then I didn't understand what happened. My vision blurred for a second, and when my vision returned, I was already standing on the street in front of Davida's house. I don't know how I got there. I rubbed my eyes in disbelief and stared at the house I was in a moment ago. In the twilight of the night, the uncurtained windows shown and the interior of the room, which had become so familiar during all this time, was clearly visible. Two silhouettes, tall and short, suddenly closed one of the window openings. My grandfather and Branson were looking at me from the window, and the taller silhouette suddenly waved at me, as if saying goodbye, and then there was a bright blue flash and the windows went out, as however, all the street lights and windows in the neighboring houses. Dogs barked and the front doors of houses slammed. People took to the streets and shouted across the plots, asking if everyone had lost electricity. And only no one came out of Davida's house. I already knew there was no one inside. If you think that this is not proof of the existence of aliens, then you are right. 
There is much more evidence and on our channel we will reveal all the secrets and evidence of their presence. I decided to show you this letter unchanged. After all, this is another proof that humans and extraterrestrial beings can live in peace. Subscribe to the channel and send me your stories related to aliens by email. You will find contacts in the About the Channel section. If I have answered you, then I'm still checking on you, because the special services of all countries have announced a hunt for me. But together we will force the authorities of all countries to disclose all the information they have. After all, people should know the truth.